Hey everybody, it's Josh. I'm back here with another how to uh, modify your homebrew equipment kind of video. So let's get right into it. Uh, before we do, actually, a big credit, big props go out to the guys at uh, Exit 12 Brewery, uh, Nick Lessigore and Brandon Delicii. I think Delicii? Dele Delicii. Is, is it Italian? I don't think it's Italian. Uh, Brandon and Nick from Exit 12, you guys uh, put out the first video that I saw and really got my wheels spinning on this um, SS Brewtech pressure transfer setup for the three SS Brewtech brew buckets that I have. Uh, and you guys put out the first video. So what I'm gonna do is use some of your tips and incorporate some of my own on the build along the way uh, because uh, uh, I learned a couple of things that you guys did uh, very well in, in instructional wise, but then things that I might have changed. And so we're gonna get into that in this video and hopefully help the folks out there in the homebrewing world. So let's get on with it. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is take this drill bit that I purchased from SS Brewtech. It uh, looks like we need to assemble it a little bit. So we're going to take the uh, drill bit. I think this is uh, putting it into the arbor. So we're going to put it down that center hole there. Comes with a little Allen wrench and a tightening set screw, if you will. And we're going to tighten that bad boy up. Next thing that I'm going to need to do, maybe not everyone needs to do, but um, I'm going to need to adapt my uh, gas fitting so that it has a worm clamp on it so that I can um, remove the hose from the ball lock as needed so that I can hook this up directly to the uh, the barb here. This is part of the pressure transfer kit. This is gonna go on top of the fermenter lid and you're gonna plug your hose in to, to push CO2 into the fermenter. So the current clamp setup that I have uh, is not removable, at least I don't have the tool to remove it and I don't want to mess with that every time. So we're going to make it uh, hooked up with a worm clamp. So really, it's pretty basic. We're just going to cut it. There we go. That's done. And then we're going to put the uh, worm clamp on first. Here's the uh, ball lock. We have this piece here, just this little adapter with its own hose barb. And we're gonna throw that on there. And we're gonna tighten this down. So we're all fastened now. Here comes the true test. We're gonna turn the gas on. So our gas is, let's see here. At 35 PSI. And I don't hear anything leaking out, so we're definitely tight. So the next thing we're gonna do is install the 17 millimeter plug. It comes with a spare O-ring. We're gonna set that to the side. O-ring stays on top as you plug the hole here on your, your flat lid. And then you take the other piece. It's uh, uniform on both sides, so don't worry about it being backwards. And you just tighten that all the way down. Um, I think finger tight will suffice. I don't think you need to go any tighter than that. So next thing you wanna do is get familiar with your parts. Um, this is your uh, compression fitting uh, between the lid uh, inside and outside. So we're gonna drill a hole and this is gonna rest on top of the lid and this is gonna come uh, thread on from underneath. You see there's a, a red gasket there. So from underneath, you're gonna thread this on tight. And again, we're just going for hand tight. And then uh, this is your gasket that you're gonna put down on the exterior of this setup. Then, uh, depending on what you're doing here, uh, this is going to, this piece, this barbed piece is going to be your setup for fermentation. And then when you're ready to do pressurized transfer, you'll use this piece and I'll kind of show you what's next. So let's take your pressurized, uh, sorry, your fermentation piece and your tri clamp and you're getting the tri-clamp around that upper portion here. The uh, top piece of this flange, the gasket, and the lower piece of the flange. And loosen it out far enough. And it's, it slides in there. And then you tighten the bad boy down. So like I said before, the boys at Exit 12 Brewery um, kind of inspired me to buy this setup. And uh, also my build is gonna be based on 
the instruction that I watch from them and then things that I'm learning uh, to do different um, when I do it. Uh, if they were to do it a second time around, they, they may agree. So one issue that I found they were having was they mounted it right here and they had to contend with you know the tri-clamp fitting and hitting the lid. I considered putting it uh, closer to here so that the twisting could be in the center, but there's it's so close to that dimple that we're not gonna get a good seal when we drill. So what I'm considering is drilling the hole closer to this side uh, so that when I'm doing the tri-clamp, I can just do it like this, right off the side and loosen same same way. So I think we're gonna drill the hole closer to this side. A little smoky, but we got it. <laughs> there we go. All right, so after you get all the metal shavings off, I'm just gonna come hit it a little bit on these upper edges with some sandpaper. And we're gonna deburr it top and bottom. And actually, I'm not gonna do much on the bottom because I'm not looking to make scratches on the inside of the fermenter, which will allow for the harboring of bacteria. Ooh, but it does need to be deburred, that's for sure. Just need to hit it lightly. Okay, so we're gonna take this top piece here, shove it on down, and then our bottom piece here. Uh, there's a little flange there. This is gonna be facing towards the lid. And we're talking finger tight, don't need to force it. And there we go, there's our compression fitting. And so now, let's put our gasket on and our blow off fitting and it looks like hopefully it's going to work as designed as as thought out that it would be on the edge here now see that's going to be an issue so we're actually going to want to turn this there we go so that we don't have any issues tightening this down and it looks like it's going as planned so that's awesome there's a little bit of rubbing um, over here. Could probably twist this out a little bit more uh, to help prevent that. There we go. Yeah, pretty easy to manipulate that. This is on there tight. This is good. So yeah, I mean, this is this was the idea was to have it so that this could be tightened up on the edge. But I did see that as a, a hindrance. This tri clamp on this flat lid. It was kind of difficult. So. I wanted to brainstorm on how to uh, improve the install. So guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, the how-to video, but in the interest of full disclosure, I made a $37 uh, mistake. Um, this was my first lid. I cut it far too close to the edge here. So the piece, um, the, the, the top uh, flange, let's call it, uh, of the um, compression fitting, uh, it just it doesn't sit flat on the lid um, so full disclosure I messed up I cut it too close in an effort to um, make the tri clamp easier so here's the here's the, uh, the second one that I did unfortunately it's gonna cost me some money hopefully I can save you some money and not making the same mistake and so you'll really see you can see the difference here and then there's the uh, the underside so the the, the top lid was the mess up see i was too just too close to that lip and then here's the better more modified <laughs> lid so uh it doesn't take much to mess it up so hopefully my 37 dollar mistake tonight because that's what these replacement lids cost um hopefully it can save you some money uh this is probably the most expensive uh costing <laughs> how-to video i i've made Oh, well, I would have made this mistake whether I was making the video or not. So hopefully you don't do it. Uh, cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe if you, or share the video if you liked it. And um, hopefully we can come out with some more of these uh, how-to videos and they don't cost me as much. <laughs> cheers.